This is 7 News, the voice of the New England. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news from the SES. Residents are being urged to take care with a flood warning declared for parts of the region. Olivia Babb is in Tamworth for us and Olivia, what are we expecting? The flood warning is for Tamworth, Carroll, Gunnedah and surrounding areas. The SES is predicting minor flooding for the Peel and Namoy rivers as heavy rain and severe thunderstorms move across the region from tomorrow through to Wednesday. Residents are being reminded to obey all road closures and make alternative arrangements for work, travel and children if necessary. If you are likely to be isolated, stock up on essentials now. And please keep up to date on the SES social media for any changes. OK, thanks for the update, Olivia. That's Olivia Babb with some breaking news for us tonight. And staying on the weather, let's check in with Kirsty now to see what happened today. And Kirsty, hot and muggy today, and we did see some storms rattling around too. We have certainly this afternoon. Maddie and Nick, hello to you both, and good evening, everyone. It was a relatively dry and sunny start to our working week, following some rainfall through Saturday and into Sunday morning. Skies clear over the New England and the northwest this morning, but we saw that cloud move through around early lunchtime. Showers and thunderstorms across the east too. Armadale had about a millimetre and a half fall very quickly about 1.30 this afternoon. The Upper Horton and Baraba also had storms and showers. And late this afternoon, a band of storms moved through Murrurunda and Scone across the Upper Hunter towards the east. Our maximums range from the high 20s into the low 30s. Now, a cloudy night is on the forecast. Wet weather on the way tomorrow. I'll have our week in weather very shortly. OK, thanks, Kirsty. We'll get more weather soon. In other news tonight, red fire ants are marching south of the Queensland border in a new threat to our farmers. Now there are calls for more funding to stop the ants in their tracks. These fire ants are the last intruders farmers need. Frightens most farmers, um, and, but not just farmers, people in, in towns and communities as well. The venomous insects were found in three nests at Mullawimba on Friday afternoon. They can be fatal to both humans and animals, posing a severe risk to livestock. The way in which the environment which we're operating today, um, there's not enough profit to actually cope with, with any of these things that could be a disaster on our farms. The insects have been recorded in south-east Queensland since 2001. New South Wales farmers are demanding urgent action to stop any further spread and want checkpoints put in place for any vehicles carrying fodder or soil. If we declare a war on it and put in place more resources at this point of time, then we should be ahead of the game. We, we've only just found it here, so we're dealing with a new scenario now. Shadow Minister for Agriculture David Littleproud maintains the $290 million allocated by the federal government isn't enough. It's exploded. It's now gone across the border. It's actually up above the range. What that means, if it gets in the waterways, it's going down the Murray-Darling. Biosecurity is described as farmers' biggest protection, but there isn't a lot of trust in the system. They're very reactionary to an outbreak, as opposed to actually making sure that we don't get the outbreak in the first place. Farmers are on edge as eradication zones have been put in place, but the fear is rising. If they get down here, we're in big trouble, and... Uh, and I don't think that we'd be able to eradicate them if that happens. Olivia Babb, 7 News. Oxley Police are tonight pleading for help to find a Tamworth woman missing for nearly two weeks. Rex Quayle is in Tamworth tonight with the details. Maddie, Tamworth Police are searching for any information on the disappearance of local woman Patricia Brown, who was last seen leaving the Tamworth Base Hospital on the afternoon of November, Wednesday, November 15th. She was supposed to return to the hospital and when she didn't, the alarm bells were raised and she has not been seen since. Police do hold concerns for her welfare. If you know any information about the whereabouts of Mrs Brown, please contact Tamworth Police or Crime Stoppers. Thanks for the update, Rex. That's Rex Quayle reporting there for us tonight. The debate about prayer and politics will be aired at the Tamworth Regional Council tomorrow night. After decades of a prayer being said before the meeting, one councillor now wants that to change. Politics and religion are two topics not meant to be discussed in polite company, but they will be front and centre tomorrow night. The question, is a prayer necessary? Though I'm religious, I, I think prayers, prayers are good. Not really. Why should they? Mark Sutherland wants an affirmation instead. The need to be inclusive. You know, to make sure that we're acknowledging the diversity that exists across our region. I think it needs to be um, broader, more diverse. There's nothing written down that says that any prayer is officially required. 
A recent study by Equinox shows that more than half of New South Wales councils still use a prayer before meetings, the highest in the country, while WA is the lowest at 8%. Local councils are definitely moving towards making sure that they feel valued, that they feel heard and that there aren't barriers that exist that prevent them from participating. Pastor James Ardell has been saying the pre-meeting prayer for the last four years. He says it's about tradition. It's not about promoting Christianity, it's about declaring that we're a Christian nation, that we're still a Christian nation, and that um, and that our heritage is important. There's also the option to have alternative religious prayers instead. Everyone should be included. Well, they need all the help they can get. <laughs> the vote will be taken tomorrow night. Olivia Babb, 7 News. It was a wet and rainy day on Saturday when the new intermodal freight hub was unveiled. Spirits weren't dampened as the first freight train rolled into Tamworth for the first time in more than 20 years. It's been a long and windy track, but after nearly a decade of planning and construction, the hub is open. Only problem, the first train was late. There's only one line coming in and out of the New England Northwest. You've got coal trains, you've got passenger trains, so you have to book a path. And if you miss your window, it's like an aircraft taking off. If you miss your landing spot or your takeoff spot, you've then got to wait. But the line is considered a vital connection for the region. Freight trains will run from Tamworth to Sydney three times a week. Trucks will still have a role to play, but there's a promise there'll be less of them on our roads. This is fantastic for the New England Northwest. This will allow produce to go directly to port, so from paddock to port in one easy option. There's more on the horizon for the freight hub with plans to expand. Freighting to Newcastle is on the cards, but that will depend on what can be exported from the region as well as appropriate infrastructure at the hub. So if there's some volume for uh, some bulk grain commodity, we can run that to Newcastle. Uh, once the infrastructure is put into Tamworth. With avenues of growth in the future, Mr Hovey says time will show just how important the hub will be. Come the, you know, the next couple of years as the volumes really take shape, that it has been worth, uh, worth all of the effort. Hugh Pearson, 7 News. There are concerns in the business community tonight that staff shortages have the potential to cripple the busiest time of the year. Staff are hard to find and the shortage could paralyse some shops. Carolers on Peel Street must mean one thing. Christmas is closer. But the Christmas cheer is not flowing into some local businesses who are wondering how they will get through the holidays. We always have issues finding stuff, especially during this time of the year because country festival is around the corner, Christmas is coming before that, so we're trying to find, but nobody's coming forward to work. There has been a 16% rise in those workplaces that have worker shortages. A post-COVID shift in mindset has led to many industries pleading for help. Hospitality is one of the biggest problem areas. It's lost 350,000 people nationwide since the pandemic. Regional areas are feeling the brunt of this loss. Businesses like Cafe Vivaldi are on the hunt for an extra chef. That's hard to find skill as it is and Imagine that if there's no staff to cook the food, how are you supposed to run a business? For Tamworth, the next couple of months are absolutely crucial in the yearly cycle of local businesses. Country Music Festival is on in January, with 30,000 people walking through Peel Street every day, and $60 million is funnelled into the local economy. Extremely important. And I think for every business in town, you have to utilise that opportunity. It's our tourist season, so get on board. And there's plenty of work out there. People just have to put themselves out there and go and show up. Rex Quayle, 7 News. Pharmacists are extending their ability to prescribe medication from this week. Now they can hand out medicine to treat certain skin conditions. Thousands of people across the state have been prescribed medicine by a pharmacist since the rules changed in May. Originally, pharmacists could only prescribe contraceptives and medicine to look after urinary tract infections. Now, the program has been expanded to include certain skin conditions. And it's really exciting to see that these new treatments or treatments from a pharmacist for skin conditions uh, will be available in the near future for our New South Wales-based patients. The change now allows pharmacists to help GPs meet the need of those across the state. And the whole point of all practitioners, not just pharmacists practising at full scope, is actually all about supporting 
our current healthcare system to meet the needs of all Australians and especially in New South Wales. Pharmacists must undertake training to prescribe these medicines. But at the end of the day, these services being provided in New South Wales, the education has been underpinned by the University of Newcastle. So pharmacists are able to do extra training, become qualified to deliver these services with patients. Some in the health sector are voicing concerns, saying pharmacists aren't qualified to prescribe these medicines. Pharmacists disagree. These treatments and these services are actually designed to not compete with general practice, but actually complement the work that our colleagues in general practice do. The pharmacists that are offering these services are suitably qualified, and at the end of the day, these treatments are very much structured and protocol driven. Hugh Pearson, 7 News. The AMA New South Wales got back to us moments ago in a statement and said the evidence shows that doctor-led care delivers the best health outcomes. Regional health funding is in the spotlight tonight with the launch of a state healthcare funding inquiry. A severe shortage of health professionals is creating problems and there are now calls to address the imbalance of funding between metro and rural areas. Eight years ago, Alan Sumner was rushed to Tamworth Hospital after suffering a second stroke. His mind still intact, but the body and mouth weren't working together and a severe shortage of staff meant Alan was left for hours without food or a way to communicate. Bad, bro. That's it. Yeah. They left you in the bed. Yeah. The Sumners want today's state inquiry into healthcare funding to find solutions that prevent other regional residents from similar experiences. There are 50% fewer health professionals per capita in the country compared to big cities. And the National Rural Health Alliance says urban centres are given $6.5 billion more dollars for healthcare than rural areas. You can understand why they had to do what they did because they haven't got the staff. If we find ourselves with a lack of health professionals where we need them in some of our smaller locations, that means that people will have to travel and that means our care becomes more difficult to access and more expensive. Alan nearly became a statistic thanks to his geographic location. In regional areas, 3% of people get adequate and timely treatment following a stroke, while in metro areas it rises to 77%. As part of the inquiry, it's going to be really important to identify whether we have the workforce we need where we need it. The government have to do something because the health system is going down very quickly. Rex Quayle, 7 News. Still to come in 7 News, an inside look at a new style prison. And the no vacancy signs going up at animal shelters right around the region. And a little later on this news hour, the plan to keep an eye on released immigration detainees worth hundreds of millions of dollars. More prisoners exchanged on the third day of that temporary truce in Gaza. And over 100 protesters charged after overstaying their welcome at our largest coal port. Welcome back. The cat vaccination shortage is continuing to pinch the region. Pounds are turning unvaccinated cats away, with the RSPCA announcing an extension to the block on strays for another month. Local vets are worried the overflowing pounds can lead to diseases being easily spread between strays and pets. If you've got an outside cat, make sure the cat is, you know, in, and keep him, you know, keep that cat as isolated as possible um, and out of contact with stray cats. The vaccinations won't be stocked until at least late January for many places. Call around to see if any local place still has some vaccination available. An experimental jail system without cells will soon be expanded across the state. The prisoners are granted unique privileges, which guards say has created a drop in assaults between inmates. Behind the wire at a maximum security jail. This is inside the Macquarie Correctional Centre in Wellington, where convicted murderers, violent offenders and drug dealers aren't in cells. Instead, they're living in dormitory pods. A maximum of 25 inmates into one unit, uh, no cells, and uh, we have a very effective structured day routine. A routine which includes working in woodwork, hospitality and engineering units, also receiving training in courses from music and computer programs to art. Privileges they are afforded if they abide by a no-violence policy, with inmates who conduct any acts of violence towards other inmates or staff 
being transferred to another facility. So we have very few assaults um, as a result of that, um, which creates a, a good positive culture and environment for us to work in. While there is no data yet that measures whether or not this model reduces reoffending, those inside the facility say its positive impact on both staff and inmate safety has been significant. Born six years ago in one of only two rapid-built prisons in the country, the privileged model is set to be rolled out into a number of the state's correctional centres, including the Hunter, Lithgow and Long Bay. No, I don't think it'll work for every prisoner, and I think that's just been real. Um, but for those that do want to sort of uh, make a change to, to the direction that they were heading in, this model certainly will work for those. Um, there are other offenders that just aren't ready to take on this concept. The innovative approach to incarceration, all designed to prepare inmates for life on the outside. Residents or community members could feel all little rest assured that the person that gets released from here is actually equipped to deal with the demands of society and actually fit in as your neighbour next door without sort of having a negative impact. Hamish Southwell, 7 News. Still to come in 7 News, all the day's sport including a powerlifting award. And the Tamworth legend heading back to the club he loves. The Canberra Raiders have called upon a Tamworth legend to oversee their leadership group in 2024. Alan Tung spent 12 years in Canberra. Now he's heading back to the club he calls home. A new era for the Canberra Raiders. Yeah, it's exciting. A um, bit of a challenge ahead for me, but I'm looking forward to it. There's nobody more qualified for the position than the former captain who led the team for five of his 12 years in the capital. We've got a really young playing group at the Raiders at the moment, and um, they're super keen. Um, it's exciting, but we're lacking a little bit of experience there. So really trying to upskill them to be confident to share their voice. Those voices won't just be heard on the field, but off it as well. It's probably been a lack of community engagement, and I think COVID brought a lot of that on, um, the disconnect. And I think when our club is doing um, its best on the field, it's actually doing a lot of great work off the field in community. Tongue has his work cut out. Jack Whiten was one of the club's best leaders, but now he's gone to South Sydney. Everybody knows the importance of Jack, you know, on the field for us, that, you know, what he can contribute um, to the team. And so that, that is going to be a big challenge for the playing group. But we have to look at it on the other side of the coin too. Tung will continue his work with the NRL alongside his new position at the Raiders. And it won't be long before he's back in Tamworth for a string of clinics. There are a couple of little um, uh, trips in regards to my NRL community work as well, back up around that region. So I look forward to getting up there early in the new year. Max Gent, 7 News. Dunn Gowan's Mitch Doring has put an end to speculation over his Group 4 future. The fullback has decided to leave and sign with the Werris Creek Magpies. It's a huge loss for the Cowboys who nabbed Doring after Manila folded at the end of 2022. The 26-year-old has signed with Creek for 12 months with pre-season training starting next month. Jack Douglas has taken out Sports Star of the Year at the Tamworth Regional Sports Awards. It comes after a huge six months for the local fitness legend competing in the CrossFit Games in the United States. For the meantime, Jake will return to Snake Athletic as he prepares for a number of competitions kicking off in the new year. The Tamworth Softball Association is on the lookout for over 35s for the upcoming state championships. The competition will take place in Sydney over three days from February the 9th. All skill levels are welcome to join with registration closing on the 15th of December. Up next in 7 News, Kirsty's back and she's got a look at what's happening weather-wise over the next few days. That's next. Welcome back, everyone. We are expecting wet weather across most of the state this week. Thanks to two wet weather systems linking up, a trough is stalling over the New South Wales northeast, while tomorrow a second low-pressure trough will move into our eastern states. These systems are set to merge, generating widespread and potentially significant rain for some before moving southwards towards the southern coast during Friday and into our weekend ahead. Now, we are expecting accumulated rainfall totals of well over 100 millimetres 
temperatures, particularly through our central and southeastern regions. Severe thunderstorms could develop, though, bringing localised heavy rainfall. Both river rain and flash flooding is possible as the week progresses, and already an initial flood watch is in place for minor flooding across the New England and the northwest, likely from Wednesday. First, though, to Tuesday's forecast. Tomorrow, we're expecting a cloudy morning. There is a risk of severe thunderstorms developing during the day, which could drop large hail, damaging winds and heavy rainfall. At this stage, showers are expected from about midday, as little as just a couple of millimetres. As much as 20 millimetres could fall, though, with those possible isolated areas of rain among those thunderstorms. Temperatures the low 20s for Armadale and Glen Innes, the high teens at the Barrington Tops. That wet weather will continue to fall into Wednesday for the middle of our working week, and that chance of severe thunderstorms will persist well into midday on Wednesday. Tamworth could see up to 25 millimetres of rain at this stage, most likely through the afternoon and the evening. Inverell 27 and Tenterfield 25. As we track into Thursday, though, we will begin to see an easing trend in this wet weather. Showers clearing to a mostly sunny and settled day. Gusty westerly winds, though, up about 30 kilometres an hour, increasing to about 35 kilometres an hour for the tablelands. Temperatures warming up in Varel to 28, Tenterfield to 27 and the low 30s about parts of the Upper Hunter. Looking ahead now, well, our final week of spring could bring this potentially dangerous storms and heavy rainfall, certainly through Tuesday and Wednesday. The start of December on Friday looking a little bit more settled ahead of some increasing rainfall early into the weekend. Yeah, that's it. We'll take the rain, but not the floods, please. Yeah, the rains we <laughs> need. Certainly need some wet weather. Thanks, Kirsty. And that's all we have time for tonight. Thanks for watching. You can catch up on our website or, of course, 7 Plus. Right now, Dan's got your national news. Enjoy your night. We'll see you tomorrow at 6 o'clock.